Hey there, everybody. It's your buddy Chapadong, and I represent DFSArmy.com, of course, one stop shopping all things daily fantasy sports from PGA to NFL to MLB. We've got you covered top to bottom with coaches, projections, cheat sheets, ownership reports, content strategy, leverage, talk tools like our chalkboard and our, our pivot tool, and all of these things all come together. Massive research stations full of statistics. All these things come together to help you build better lineups. And most importantly, we've got the coaching inside that know how to use these tools and are successful players themselves that can help guide you through building better lineups yourself. What's white noise? What should you be paying most attention to? Et cetera, et cetera. That's where the magic and the value of this community really is, is getting your questions answered as they come up, as you learn to use our tools and learn to become a better player, take advantage of exploiting the public. That's where we help you the most. So if that interests you, you need to dive down into the comment section, click the link dfsarmy.com, use the coupon code dfsarmy to get a 10% off discount, click the like and the notification bell while you're down there, subscribe to the channel. Hey, that helps me get this content to you because we're going to start talking baseball and we're going to start revving it up here in the next couple of days and we're going to form a daily routine process for my VIPs for the most part I may put a few out to the public but mostly it's going to be for the VIPs I do want to show you a little bit about the domination station if you saw yesterday's video I was talking a little bit more about the research station today we'll talk about the optimizer and show you the basics when it comes to DraftKings or FanDuel either one I just picked FanDuel it's easier to describe to you guys I mean it works the same on both sites but the machine moves a little bit faster it's not as complex etc cetera, etc cetera. we don't have any game totals or anything in here yet for the games they will populate when we get them of course you've got all of your position tabs salary range sliders fantasy point range number of lineups ownership cap you want to you know a lineup that's only got 150 percent ownership in it from top to bottom when you add all those ownerships together so that you get a lower owned combination you might use that slider i really don't i guide that i, I control that stuff myself through the fine-tuning process of the optimizer but you can put a salary cap on there if you want to leave some money on the table uh, allowing hitting against pitching of course batting order stuff you don't want the seven eight nine guys you can simply uncheck them and move right along you got your confirmed lineups only if you'd like. You've got your position uh, stuff here to force at least one of these players in there with a projection underneath. Whatever. You want a pitcher under 20% owned, you can force one in there. Okay. So bottom line is the tool has some of the general guides on it for you. You can also use the randomization slider, which will take the projection the player has. If he has a projection of 10 points and you put a 10% slider on it, It'll give you a random projection anywhere between 9 and 11 points for that player. On one run, it'll be 9.5. On another, it might be 10.8, whatever. Sometimes that helps you block the ties. It helps you uh, get a better mix of players up and down the top of your lineup. Baseball is a random sport. I recommend a pretty high randomization setting, to be quite honest with you, so that you kind of get some of those random happenstances that make or break slates. Uh, optimal mode, fantasy points, play, unique players, all that stuff is stuff we can talk about at a different time. You'd click optimize and run it. But if you want to start including your stacking, you would come here to this top MLB stacking rule. And your combinations, you can set specific formations. You want a 3x3 three three or a 4x2 or a 4x4, four four, you can do that here. You're setting the basic percentage of lineups that you want. You're going to run 100 some odd lineups. And 10% of them are going to be a 4x4. Four four. What does that mean? That means four players from Team A and four players from Team B. You can control some of the consecutive order. You want a 2, 3, 4, 5 stack, whatever. You can do that. But the more restrictions you put on these optimizers, the more you're going to have trouble getting a full allotment of 100 to 150 lineups when you play with the machine. Leave it wide open at first, and then as you run it and rerun it, start putting the clamps on it then. Like run it pretty wide open and then come back and restrict something, run it again, see if it takes. Go back, put something, another restriction on it, see if it takes. That way you know where you were when the machine starts to bog down. Because if I said I want 100 4x4 four four stacks and you know just don't give it many players, it only has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hitters then I'm going to have trouble with that machine because of salaries and everything else. I need to leave it running a little bit more loosely, if that makes sense. I can control the team exposures as well. I can do all of the teams, or I can start unchecking teams if I don't want 
you know, say say I only want Yankees, Red Sox, Dodgers, um, you know, Padres, whatever, then I can certainly do that by checking only those boxes. And I can control the minimum and maximum. A lot of industry optimizers don't give you minimums. We do. But control the minimum and the maximum exposures on there. If I wanted, say, those five teams and I want 20% of each team, I put a 20% minimum on each team and that's what I'm going to get. Okay. This is the first stack, the left side, if you will, the first stack of your lives. You can run Yankees, Milwaukee, Chicago stacks over here, and then run Boston, Philly, Miami stacks over here and get Yankees, Boston, Yankees, Philly, Yankees, Miami, Kansas City, Miami, or Chicago, Miami, Chicago, Boston, whatever. You're going to get those combinations. You won't get any Yankees, Milwaukee if, these are the, if they're not on both sides. You have to leave them checked over here as well to get, you know, I'd have to have the Yankees here and the Yankees here, Milwaukee here and Milwaukee here to get a Yankee-Milwaukee or Milwaukee-Yankee combination, okay? So that goes into consideration when you're starting to parse down your teams and you want, you, sometimes you only want 2 or 3% of a certain team. Now, the next thing to look at is percentages. These need to add up. If I'm selecting teams and I only want four teams, well, they can't add up to over a 25% minimum because if that adds up to a over 100% minimum exposure, the machine's going to bog down, right? I put a big, I put a too restrictive of a, of a rule on the machine. Same thing when you're using the maximum exposures. I want 3% of these guys, 12% of these guys, 5% of these guys. Keep track of that number and make sure that it adds up up to a number around 100%. If it's a little under 100%, that's okay. You'll see some unstacked lineups, but you should get the number of lineups that you're looking for. If the number goes over 100%, you're going to start having problems. So think of it over here as 100% and think of it over here as a different 100%. Okay? These two don't work together. Like I can't get this to add up to 150% and this only 50%. That's not going to work. And we'll show you that more as time goes on as we go through the routine and we start selecting teams and all that good stuff. You can also control the batters in the order down here. Controlled stacking is an entirely different beast. That allows me to set up, if I want to double stack, I can run my own 3x3, three three, but it's going to be in every single lineup that I produce. I can select all of the different teams and I can add another team and add another team and control my percentages of Pittsburgh stacks and Cincinnati stacks, but I can also control literally just the players in those stacks. If I only want those three players in that three-man stack, that's all I'm going to get. If I add a fourth and even maybe a fifth guy, well, now I'm going to get three of these five. But I can eliminate the guys I don't want with this controlled stacking, but I'm not going to get the mix that I will get in the more generalized team stacking where I'm randomly selecting teams from this side now. I don't care if I get a New York, Milwaukee, New York, Minnesota, New York, Boston. I don't care what combinations I get. Baseball's a little bit random. I can control that with these check boxes and cut the numbers of possibilities down. But as a general rule, I don't want to control a lot of that. Now, we used to control a lot, and that's where we would use this, not this side over here, this controlled team stacking. We'd only put the names in. And some people still like that method, and that's fine. And over here, the player combination rules, you can stack between 1 and 4, or 2 and 4, or 0 and 3, or whatever, of these groups of players in a minimum of X number of lineups and create that rule. If I wanted the Cincinnati Reds, and I only wanted, you know, Joey Votto and whatever else, you know, two or three other players in there, then I can set that, and in my 150 lineups, I can get at least, say, those that combination of players in five of those lineups. Or I can lock them in as one big stack and just take my chances and put them in all of my lineups. Again, the options are there to control this machine as much as you want to. You can also control percentages. You can boost these odds, like these percentages. These fantasy points here, 37.6. If I boost him 10%, then he's going to go up. And he's going to go up to 41%, adding about 4 points or 10% to his score. Okay? I can also control minimums and maximums of each individual player. I only want, say, 75% of any one player in my lineups. I click that exposure max, and it gives me 75% of everyone. Okay? 
So I can control these numbers as I go up and down the slate. I can again scroll by position and only do first baseman, only do second baseman, go position by position. And when I change these projections and give them little boosts, up 10%, up 15%, change their numbers in here. Why would I do that? Because I want the optimizer to put a little bit extra weight on those guys in my lineups. Instead of 10% of that player, I might want 20%. I can also control it through the minimums and these maximums, but I can also juice his projections and get him a little bit of a mix between, you know, lineup of 100 lineups. He might appear in lineup 1, 3, 12, 27, 35, whatever. It spreads them out, it mixes them up, and it gets, the, gets me a little bit better portfolio of players when I start playing with these projections a little bit, but it also gives me, instead of 20% or something, it may give me 25 or 30% of a certain player that also helps me build the line, basically attack a slate with my game plan. If I like Cleveland Indians, I'm going to boost a lot of their projections and get that optimizer to like the Cleveland Indians as well. Or you can run it just plain, plain Jane, not making any changes to it. Again, sky's the limit. You can customize this machine as much as you want to, and that gives you total control over your own player pool. Once I've run some lineups, I've got some options here, okay? I can sort again by position and watch my player ownerships out of 25 lineups. You know, I used 119 players. I've got 52% Delmonico. If I don't like that, then I can come down to 30% and then click Optimize again, and he'll only be in 30%. It'll put a hard cap on him. If I don't like, you know, say I, I, I like Riley Adams and I want, you know, 15% of him in these lineups, then I'm going to just put a 15% minimum on him, and that's going to push him into at least 15% of my lineups, according to my stack rules and everything else. Again, if I put 30% minimum on that guy and there's no team, there's no room left in my stacks, then I'm going to bog the machine down. So again, you have to keep a big general frame of mind open when you're working this machine, and it does take some practice. But that's, again, what your coaches are for. That's what the guys are there to help you, guide you through. Hopefully you can watch a few routines or ask some players that know their routine inside and out, and they can help pick through where you might be having a little bit of trouble. That's the idea of the coaching. But I already can tell that there's going to be in the raw projections a lot of Arizona Diamondbacks. If I don't like them, I can go up here, and then I can flat out uncheck the team, and I won't get any Arizona stacks wherever Arizona is. And here, there they are. I could just uncheck them, and I won't get any Arizona stacks in my lineups, okay? But I can also come down here and check my team exposures. How many stacks did it build me, right? It built me Cincinnati stacks nine times, Atlanta stacks five times, Arizona stacks four times, Milwaukee stacks four times. I can see my team exposures, and I can get, if I don't like that much Cincinnati, I can cut them down. It will only give me 20% stacks of Cincinnati. If that's within my range up in here of Cincinnati stacks, then the machine will still work, and it'll take a little bit finer control over the process. The actual stacks, stack one, is these teams over here on the left, stack two is these teams over here on the right. So how many is stack one do I have? And if, you know, if I'm only using a few teams over here and a few teams over on stack two, then I can still control how many of these guys I'm seeing, and I may want a lot of Padres tonight and not a lot of Yankees. And that's where I can check and make sure that, it, or I may want a lot of you know Cincinnati on both sides of the stacking machine because I want it to mix with everybody. These are things, again, that I can control. And I can control the percentage, bump them down, whatever I want to do. I can see that I've got a lot of Cincinnati on the right, on the left side stack one. I don't have as much Cincinnati over on the right side stack two. I can make those necessary adjustments. I can also check the combinations here. I've got Cincinnati and Pittsburgh twice. Uh, Minnesota and Toronto just once. Everybody else just once. I can also control these numbers. The way you're going to get tighter control over your MME process or whatnot is to take some stands and cut these guys down or put a cap of, say, 2% or something on everybody. So maybe you get one stack in case it goes off and it helps. But in a lot of cases, by eliminating those little bitty options and spreading out too thin, you're going to target your game plan, target your attack plan. And when that night has a good night, you're going to see better results. Again, how much you want to spread out, how much you want to tighten up, it's going to depend on you, but that's where our coaches can help you out. Hopefully this gives you a brief run through of the optimizer, shows you some of the features. You can control your line, your individual lineups and see there's your Cincinnati stacks, etc. And hopefully that helps you build better lineups. Again, DFSArmy.com. Come in here and ask us questions. We're ready to help you. 
Use the coupon code DFSARMY, get 10% off, and click the like and subscribe button while you're down there. Appreciate it, guys. Opening day is tomorrow. Take her easy, and we'll talk to you real soon.